Okay, we are at where we left off. So make sure you know that. Um, I'm going to ask you to explain it. You're going to, some of you are going to try to just memorize it as it is here. Like I put like these little arrows, don't put arrows. I want you to explain what's going on, you know, write it out in sentences. I want to make sure you actually understand it. Not that it was just memorized. Steroids, however, are going to be more of a listing type of thing. <clears throat> um, so what, what do I say about steroids? So zona fasciculata, this is the second zone of the um, cortex, the adrenal cortex. So the first zone was um, zona glomerulosa. The second one, zona fasciculata. They make a class of um, drugs called uh, glucocorticoids. I just realized I made a mistake in the last class. So I told you that. So let's go back a little bit. Renin, angiotensin, aldosterone. I told you that aldosterone was a glucocorticoid, which is totally wrong. Um, it's a, I'm just like thinking of it right now. It's called mineralo, mineral, mineral O corticoid. So it's not glucocorticoid, it's mineralo corticoid. You will, like, you won't see that. I'm not going to test you on it, but I mean, you'll see it. Like if you go to take the HESI or whatever it is that you're taking, like they'll ask you, and instead of referring to it as aldosterone, they might refer to it as a, as a mineralocorticoid, right? So it's definitely not a glucocorticoid. A glucocorticoid is a steroid. <clears throat> like steroids that we, like, like these steroids, like hydrocortisone and cortisol, prednisone, medrol, whatever, those are all examples of glucocorticoids. Where is that renin angiotensin aldosterone? That's all stimulated by low blood pressure. Actually, I'm gonna turn around. That's all stimulated by low blood pressure. This is stimulated by ACTH. So this comes from the pituitary. ACTH comes, if that's one of the hormones from the anterior pituitary, it comes down to the adrenal gland and it stimulates the release of steroids. This is what steroids do. So let's look at some of these. Let me first look at these bottom three. No, actually, you know what? We'll come to that last. Let's look at these top. So immunosuppressant in high doses, right? So they, you see they give it with people that, that um, you know, if you have a transplant or whatever it is, if you're trying to fight an autoimmune disease, disease you, try, you will give high doses of, um, maybe you'll give high doses of prednisone or something like that. On. You'll give high doses of prednisone, for example. Um, it helps you deal, steroids help you deal with stress. And by stress, I mean all stress. So physical stress, emotional stress, that's what steroids help you deal with. Steroids are anti inflammatory. So if you have tendinitis, something like that. They could give you a steroid shot. It might work relatively quickly. Um, now let's look at the bottom three. Increased glucose availability, lipolysis, increased amino acid use. We talked about these bottom three when we talked about 
some other hormone. What other hormone deals with this? I'm just getting old and I can't remember. I'm waiting for one of you to unmute so you can tell me. Like we're making more ATP. I'm gonna start calling on you then. Think you're safe in your homes? No, Diamond, you're not at all safe. What's up, Diamond? New Hello. button right in the middle. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. What are your thoughts? Um, I don't have any. <laughs> what? I was okay. hoping I wasn't your first victim. <laughs> I know your your name your your picture was like right in the middle of like my row of pictures. That's that's it. <laughs> what about you, Troy Lynn? What do you think? It's okay, we'll wait. What well, does anyone else have any ideas? Can you repeat the question? Oh, yes. <clears throat> That's actually for everyone. So, look, if you see, this is what steroids do. They increase the amount of glucose available. They break up fats. And they increase the amount of amino acids you use. So I want to know where did you see that before? Like what other hormone does that? It's not the adrenal glands, huh? I know one of the glands or something. There's another gland that makes a hormone. There's another hormone. It's actually like a hormone. Um, if it's what? Would it be testosterone? Well, actually, you're right. You know, we, we haven't gotten to that yet, but you're right. Well, I mean, testosterone does that too. But what, was the, what, what hormones were we talking about? Last class. Was it thyroid? The thyroid hormones. Mm -hmm. That's what they do. They do like this. They do these things at the bottom. And so does testosterone. And so does human growth hormone. So you got like four different hormones that do the same thing. At least this bottom part. So steroids... Human growth hormone, testosterone, thyroid hormones, they all increase, and I'm gonna add a fifth one, adrenaline. <clears throat> they all increase the amount of blood sugar available, and they all increase, and they all break down fat more. That's to all increase the amount of ATP you make, increase the amount of energy you make. So we got like five hormones doing different, like the same thing, but why? Like why do they do them? That's kind of where they're different. So with human growth hormone, human growth hormone increases the amount of glucose, lipolysis, and it increases the amount of amino acids. Human growth hormone does it for growth. You're going to make more bone, so you need more amino acids. You need to break down fat. You need to break down sugar. You need that for energy. Here with steroids, they're doing it here usually to repair something. So I was using the example of like spraining your ankle or something like that, right? You've got to repair that tissue. So whenever you repair tissue, just by virtue of using the word repair, I need proteins. So that's this bottom one, increased amino acid use. So whatever food I'm eating, I want to get as many amino acids, aka proteins. I want to get as many amino acids out of that as possible. That's the bottom one. So I've got the amino acids, but I also need energy. So I need amino acids and I need energy. The energy is going to help me to take the proteins and like fix whatever's wrong with me. That's the lipolysis, breaking up fat, and increased glucose availability. 
it's making more blood sugar. That's just, that's what you're doing. So that's what that's what steroids also do. So yeah. So that's what um, steroids do. These six things, um, if I ask you on the exam, it'll probably be to list it like you see um, up here. Um, I have a question. Yes. And that's not in any partic like particular order. It's just like um, like what they do in general. Yeah. Okay. Order doesn't matter. So this is the this is the um, in fact I'm gonna switch to the board and I told you guys that I'd have like a I'll start presenting again in a minute I told you that I'd have a camera um, that I'd switch rooms and that didn't happen. <laughs> So let's just make like a little list of hormones that kind of do the same thing. Yeah. Give you darker. T3, T4, um, testosterone since someone- Did you, it. are you writing on, okay, there it is, cause your, your computer froze up for oh, a second. Uh, And by steroids, I mean what we normally think of as steroids. And what am I missing? I want to put another one. HGH. And do I got room for one more? I'm going to try one more. Um, I'm just going to put epi for short. So I got five different hormones. I mean, that's in your testicles. That's made up in your neck. That's made in your adrenal glands. That's gonna like come from your brain. And that's gonna also be made in your adrenal glands. <clears throat> so what do they all have in common? All of them. Lipolysis and uh, I'm just going to say glucose use. Those are, all, those are our two energy sources. Fats and sugars, that's where we get energy from. And we use fats and we use sugars to make ATP. And then the ATP, that's the energy. So, you, you know, your body needs energy to do anything. Do you want to grow? Do you want to maintain your metabolism? Do you want to fix, repair a tissue? Do you want to run away from a snake? You need energy for everything. You need energy for all of that. So that's why they kind of do the same things. Um, sometimes they work together. Sometimes they don't. You know, somebody that's going through puberty, they're going to have a ton of human growth hormone, right? But they'll also have testosterone. And they'll also increase the amount of this and increase the amount of this. They're, yeah, they're, you know, they're all in on that. Um, some differences here is kind of like the reason. What's the reason for this? What is T3 and T4 for? Just for general metabolism. Testosterone for, you know, secondary sex characteristics. Um, it does some other. I'm going to take testosterone off. I know you guys hate it because you're actually writing stuff in your book. All 
All right, so metabolism, general metabolism, just being, just being you. Steroids would be repair. That's not all steroids do, right? It doesn't just fix body tissues, like the slide said. Uh, immunosuppressant and helps you with stress, but it also does repair. That's what the last three bullet points were for. HGH, growth. You might be able to read that. You might not be able to see that out there. It says fight or flight. Mm. So same thing, different reasons. <clears throat> These three are also going to use amino acids. So um, like increase... amino acid use the first three you want to make more you want to you want to make proteins when you're doing your metabolism you know you still got to make stuff even though I'm like 51 I still make stuff I still make skin I still make hair maybe not where I want it to be I still make enzymes and antibodies Still making all that stuff. So yes, yes for this, because I'm still making things. If I get injured, yes, I need proteins. There's no other way. That's how you're going to repair things. Do you want to make more tendon or do you want to um, make more muscle or whatever it is? That's protein. You need proteins. So I need to get more of that from the hamburger. Today I'm only getting... 18% of proteins from a hamburger. I made that number up. When I pump out steroids, I'm going to get like 30% of the proteins from my hamburger. Right? You don't get all proteins from the food you eat. Right? But with steroids, you're going to get more out of that food. Your body's going to absorb more. Not really applied to me. I'm making low, low levels of human growth hormone. I mean, I don't know why. And, and that's the truth about the endocrine system. We really don't know. I mean, whatever I'm telling you is just like the tip. Right? So, but you know, when you're a teenager, like my, my, I got a 16 year old, he's, he's making this, he's doing this. Why the amino acids, muscle, bone, liver, all the shit that makes him grow. Um, all right, let's look at this last one. There is no amino acids here. That last one's different. Because epinephrine, and I was going to get to this in the next slide. I have this in a slide. Epinephrine's for fight or flight. You don't need to make muscle or make skin or make anything. This is very immediate. You have to lift the burning car off your mother. I don't know why I just thought of that, right? That's immediate. Fight or flight. Because they say like, there's these stories about people that like do crazy things. Like, you know, when they're, when they're panicking, like, oh, this guy lifted a, lifted a car off of the person. Right? And then they say, oh, why, would, why did he do something crazy? Oh, that was because he had epi flowing through him. He had adrenaline. It was, his, it was his adrenaline. It made him like superhuman strength. I don't know if that's the case, but no protein use. You don't need to grow or fix anything or anything. You just need to run away. So with epinephrine, there is no amino acids. You're just dumping blood sugar and you're breaking up fat and you're trying to make as much ATP and to get it to your legs or whatever muscles you need, to get it to your muscles as fast as you can. That's what epinephrine does. That's why your heart's racing. You're trying to pump that ATP 
to the place that it needs to be. So you got these different hormones, but they do the same thing. And, and I, think, I think your book talks about it, and I don't really know how they term it, but you know, there's this idea that your body will, you know, again, there's like some redundancies built in into your body where it, it'll do the same thing. And of course, there's some other differences here. Of course, you know, um, like, you know, steroids do more than just repair tissue now because we had it on the slide. Um, since I'm already getting off track, I didn't talk about HGH in particular, but you associate HGH with these other chemicals called insulin-like growth factors. Oh, I see what I did. So human growth hormone actually makes these other, it, it, it triggers another hormone called insulin-like growth factors. And even like think of the, like hear the word insulin, insulin-like growth factors, right? It's like, so that's kind of like insulin. Yeah. So is insulin, so insulin, these are all, all these, I'm not going to ask on the test, but like all these hormones are linked. So like growth, growth hormone, insulin, like growth factors, insulin, glucagon, they're all like, all these hormones are like linked together. But um, just, just remember this word. If you see insulin, like growth factors, that's, that's what, um, that's what human growth hormone is triggering. Should have wrote my arrow the other way. So human growth hormone is going to trigger insulin-like growth factors, and then that's going to do like these things we were talking about. I guess since we're on epi, this epinephrine, um, that was my next slide, and I'll, I'll, I'll put it up there, but epinephrine, you know, for fight or flight, um, it does these things, increase, increases glucose use, lipolysis, you know, breaking down lipids, um, increased heart rate, because you want to get that blood wherever it's going, and... I'm going to put something else here. There is a hormone that's very similar to epinephrine called norepinephrine. So it's the word epinephrine, it's just got N-O-R before it. They used to call it adrenaline and noradrenaline. They, there's slight differences between them, but I don't care if you know that. But technically, norepinephrine increases contractility, meaning your heart. Like how forceful your heart squeezes and pushes blood out. So not only is your heart beating faster, but it's like beating stronger, you know, more forcefully. So you're really pushing blood around your body with epinephrine and norepinephrine. But right now, we can just leave it as epinephrine. That's fine. So this is what epinephrine does. So I'm gonna move back. I'm gonna move back to the slides. Let me move back to the PowerPoints. Oh, I, did I stop? Sh I stopped sharing. Hold on. Was that backwards, by the way? I hope not. Okay. So that's what steroids do. I'll probably ask you to list them. There's the adrenal medulla. 
So the second, the, the, the middle part of the adrenal gland. And that's pretty much what I wrote down. Hold on, I gotta let somebody in. Come back. So there's what the there's what the medulla does, right? It increases heart rate, lipolysis, increased blood glucose. The medulla is the most center part of your um, adrenal gland. <clears throat> There's one more thing that's made from your adrenal gland. I didn't, I don't see it in the slides. I don't see it in the slides. It's, um, and you know what, to be honest, I'm not gonna ask you on the exam. So just kind of keep it in your head. That third layer of the um, cortex, so you have zona glomerulosa, zona fasciculata. The third one, the deepest zone, it's called zona reticularis. It makes something called androgens. So I think I have this like in another video. Again, I'm not going to ask you on the test, on any test. Androgens, um, the most common androgen is this thing called DHEA. And sometimes you'll see that um, if you're female, you'll see it on a lab test here and there. DHEA. Um, it, it's linked with estrogens. So if you have like low D, DHEA, you're going to have, it's, it, you're going to have low estrogen production. And you know, when you look at like estrogen and testosterone, they're, they're all made from the same thing. They're all super related. Like estrogen is first made and then you tweak estrogen a little bit and it makes testosterone. So we actually, men, came from women. If you look at it like with the chemicals. Um, so you tweak test estrogen and you come up with testosterone. So they're very related to each other. It's just like a little change in the, in the molecule, the molecular structure. So they're in like a balance, right? So for me, they're in a balance. They're, it's not balanced like 50-50. I got a bunch maybe not as much as I'd like, but a bunch of testosterone in me. And then I've got estrogen and the testosterone is, is, is holding down the estrogen, right? If something happens to make my testosterone levels low, the estrogen is going to start to come up. And the reverse is true. If something messes with your estrogen levels, it's going to, like those start to go down, then the testosterone is going to start to come up because we, we both have both of those hormones in us. So um, what was my point? If you're missing, if you have low DHEA, even the word stands for dihydroendosterone, endosterone, it's like O-N-E, it's like, a, all right. Anyway, if you have low levels of this, um, you might start getting like uh, pseudomorphism, like hair on your face. Um, and then maybe at the same time, you're, um, you're very stressed out, like, not stressed out like today. I mean, like super stressed out, right? So, okay, you're like, well, something's maybe up with steroids. Like I'm not making enough steroids and I've got like the hair thing. And maybe uh, my fight or flight is going off for nothing, right? Like you, your, your son spilled milk and you just, you just want to like choke somebody, right? It's just maybe there's something with the adrenal, like maybe you have like something like adrenal hyperplasia, right? Because like, when you think about it, like the symptoms are being um, not dealing with physical or emotional stress and um, having like uh, pseudomorphism, like having hair where, where you shouldn't have hair and, um, you know, having like a trigger, hair trigger, temper. Um, those things point back to the adrenal line.
your zona fasciculata is, is messed up. So your steroids are messed up. Your medulla is messed up and your um, zona reticularis. So your, your, your DHEA is low. And, and a simple way to find that out is just to do a lab test and they'll look at your DH. Well, they'll look at everything, right? But they're going to probably look at DHEA first. And if it's normal, then probably just your personality. And that can't be fixed with medicine. Just kidding. Actually, it can, can it? Um, so anyway, I'm just trying to tie it into something that's um, life. So that's your, that's, your, um, that's your adrenal gland. We had a total of, I'm going to go back a few slides. We had a total of, uh, I didn't put everything. Four layers. Right, these are the three layers of the, these are the three layers of the cortex. And that's what we talked about. Zona glomerulosa, mineralocorticoids. We talked about aldosterone. That was the kind of long process that I keep telling you, you have to know. The renin, angiotensin, aldosterone thing, complex. Whatever you want, a pathway. It's probably a better word. Then today, we talked about glucocorticoids, which were steroids. Glucocorticoids are steroids. In fact, if you get, if you get steroids from like an, like whenever I travel overseas, I, I load up on medicines that I can't get here. So like one of the things I get, I get a few different broad spectrum antibiotics, um, like azithromycin and um, amoxicillin and um, whatever. I get different antibiotics so I don't have to, so I can just treat myself and I don't have to go to the ER because you don't want to go to the ER. And the other thing I get is steroids, just in case. Um, and they're usually called, instead of, they call it glucocorticoids. So if you like go to Mexico and get something or um, wherever you go, they're often going to say glucocorticoids. They don't even call it steroids. So why would I take it? Like, why would I have it in my house? Well, stuff like that, tendonitis, if I want like anti-inflammatory, or if I get like poison ivy or sumac or whatever it is, and like sometimes like it gets uncontrolled, and that cream that they sell in the store, that's hydrocortisone, 1%. That's garbage. That doesn't do anything, right? So um, when you want the real stuff, you know, just have a have a med pack or some prednisone with you. Sometimes when you go to the doctor, just go to the clinics. Clinics are better places to go than like hospitals. Go to one of those like overnight clinics and they got some resident or maybe they have a PA in there or a nurse practitioner and, you know, and just kind of like give them some symptoms or, or maybe ask. I, I have to just ask. If I'm going there for something else, I'll throw in I'll throw in some symptoms, try to get like a shouldn't talk. I'm not telling you all this. This is getting recorded. Um don't ask for any medicine you don't need. Don't buy medicine overseas. Um so I think we covered the adrenal gland. Now we're on the pancreas. Before we go on the pancreas, does anybody have any questions about the adrenal gland? Because I was kind of all over the place. Know the renin angiotensin aldosterone, that whole thing. Know that pathway. Know what steroids do. Wait, I'm just checking something. All right. Look, we're almost done. All right. Oh. Oh, check this out. This is what I was trying to write up on the board. Why did I do that? This is, look, thyroid hormones. 
um, IGF, insulin-like growth factors. So you know that that is human growth hormone. So thyroid hormones, growth hormone, steroids. And this slide is showing you that they have, see, lipolysis. Gluconeogen, um, using, you know, making more sugar, using more sugar. So this is what this slide's trying to show you. All right, it's a little bit. I probably that's why I had it in there. All right, let's talk about the the pancreas. Here's the pancreas. Your stomach is actually above it. Um, your stomach's above it. If you kind of lift the stomach up, you'll see the pancreas underneath. Um, most of the of the pancreas are made from things called acini, A-C-I-N-I. -I. Like 99% of the pancreas has what we call like an exocrine function. So we're not going to actually discuss that. We're going to talk about the 1%, right? And that's what this bottom part of the slide is um, down here. So 99% of the pancreas is made up of, of acini, and they make enzymes that help you digest food. We're concerned with the 1% that make these like circles called pancreatic islets. Or maybe in high school, they were called like the islets of Langerhans. <clears throat> so pancreatic islets make hormones. They make four hormones. Um, if you're in lab, we sort of looked at them. If you look at the, at the slides in lab, like the under modules, you can see it's like a red pancreas. And then the, the, the circles, the eyelids are like these white patches. Um, I got it good on the, um, on the PowerPoint of the, you know, the slides that are on the PowerPoints, but I didn't get they're, they seem a little bit tougher for us to find in the lab. I don't think I've got a good slide. But anyway, these islets have four different types of cells in them. Um, actually, wait, I'm going, I'm going to go back here. See right here, it says, actually, it's telling you here if you can read it. Alpha cell. Can you read that? I might write it on the board. You know, to be honest, I don't even care about the cells so much. It's just that I want to know about the hormones that they make. But, again, you should know that alpha cells make glucagon and beta cells make insulin. I guess the most important is that the beta cells make insulin. That's, um, that's something that I've seen on, like, entrance exams and stuff like that. All right, there's a question that will talk about the, the beta cells. So know that the beta cells make insulin and the alpha cells make glucagon. So if you look at the next slide here, we have insulin and glucagon. Um, I'm going to write on the board, so I'm going to stop sharing for a second. Because you don't, I mean, you don't need all this. So. Stop. Uh, presenting all right back up on the board so we have glucagon and insulin they do different things we know what insulin does insulin lowers blood sugar Glucagon raises blood sugar. And I'm going to write the word dextrose. Dextrose is glucose. Same thing. The dextrose, glucose, blood sugar, that's all the same word. So glucagon raises your blood sugar. Insulin lowers your blood sugar. How, you want to know. You're dying to know. It stores, it stores it as a molecule called glycogen. I think I already put this on the board before. 
Glycogen is just a big molecule of sugar. And we store this in your liver and muscles. It's not a correct analogy, but I think of it always like a sugar cube versus like granules of sugar. So you've got granules of sugar in your floating in your blood. And when you get too much sugar in your blood, you start making a sugar cube and put that sugar cube into your liver and muscles. That's like glycogen. So that's how you lower your blood sugar. You're taking it out of your blood, but you're not removing it from your body. You're just storing it as glycogen. Attention, please. We have a fire emergency in a building. All building occupants must evacuate the building immediately. Use the stair. We should have just left though, huh? Attention, oh, please. Sorry, Attention, no. please. They're testing the systems today. When your blood sugar gets low, you break up you break off little pieces of sugar and you drop it into the blood to make your blood sugar go up. That's what um, that's what glucagon does. So glucagon raises your blood sugar. How? By breaking up glycogen. Insulin lowers your blood sugar by forming glycogen. So your body is doing this all day. You're making glucose. I mean, sorry, you're making glycogen and you're breaking up glycogen. You're making and breaking up glycogen, depending on how much food you've, ate, you've eaten and like where your blood sugar is. So like right after you eat breakfast, like in that hour, you're probably more insulin heavy, right? You're making glycogen. Because you eat all that food, your blood sugar starts to go up and then you start making insulin so that you can, you know, get that glucose out of your blood. <clears throat> 11 o'clock or so, you haven't eaten anything since breakfast, your blood sugar goes down, you're going to release glucagon, which is going to raise, like your, you know, it's going to break up glycogen and, and put blood sugar in your blood. So that's what this is saying. Um, we call that glyco... Glycogen, glycogenolysis. You're breaking up glycogen and then lysis. Glycogen, glycogenolysis. Maybe that's how you say it. Breaking up glycogen. And then if I want to make it, if I want to make glycogen, I call it genesis. So lysis to like break up, genesis to make. So glycogen genesis, glycogen glycogenesis right here so the word genesis means like making it like the beginning of right so you're making sugar here and you're, the words i don't care about the words but just in your head you know just fyi just know when blood sugar goes low glucagon is released to make your blood sugar higher by breaking up glycogen insulin makes your blood sugar lower so they're working, they're working to, you know, they're all working to keep your blood sugar, you know, somewhere around 100 or whatever. You know, 130, 90, 100, 120, you know, a little bit up, a little bit down. Keep it somewhere around 90 or whatever, 100, whatever the number is. People have different opinions. Um, you know, 80... Attention. 80 is a little bit low, like too low, right? 60, some people start. Stairs, do not use the elevators. Attention, please. I want to go down the stairs. I've seen people at 60, they're, they start going into a fit. It's like too low. Um, but then, you know, I've seen people with 40 that are still like awake and okay. Just depends, right? But you know, we want to be somewhere, whatever, ninety to one ten. I don't. People have different ideas, right? And then, um, so doesn't this just go back into like our negative feedback and balance of homeostasis? 
That's exactly what this is. Negative feedback, homeostasis. We want to keep it normal. These two hormones work to on negative feedback mechanisms. Like once your blood sugar is fine, no more insulin. You know, once it's high enough, I'm sorry, low enough. Once it's low enough, no more insulin. Once your blood sugar gets high enough, no more glucagon. What messes us up is when we, when we swing, we swing too far. You know, you eat like a bunch of biscuits with syrup and your blood sugar spikes instead of going up a little bit. And then you don't eat anything. You go to work and you just start working and you don't eat anything. And you wait, you wait until your blood sugar is like down too far. And then you, you go eat a bunch of fried food and more candy and stuff and your blood sugar goes back up and you're doing that type of thing, right? So if you have the genes for type 2 diabetes and you're doing this your whole life, eventually when you get like my age, your body just gives up. I mean, you can make insulin, but your cells aren't going to listen. Because they're tired of this. Yeah, you can't eat candy in the form of a cereal and then not eat. Can't do that for your whole life and like nothing is gonna happen to us. Right, so for some people have type one diabetes, they don't even make insulin from from an early age, right? Their their pancreas, their beta cells just stop making it. That's type one. That usually happens younger, right? So they'll say juvenile diabetes. Um, it can happen at any age, but usually it's when you're younger. And then the type 2 diabetes usually happens when you get older. But now we're starting to see it in younger people. But that's just, you know, that's your genes. That's ha both cases, in both scenarios, is having bad genes. Not bad genes, but you have the genes for it. But type 2 diabetes, you could... Most people believe you can, you can delay when you would get it. You, your, your environment influences it. So if you eat really bad, you're going to get it at a younger age. If you try to take care of yourself and eat a low glycemic index when you're young, you can maybe die from something else. Just get a heart attack one day and the grandkids are all around you and take a nap with Nana and then she just doesn't wake up instead of like losing your feet and being in a cart. So yeah, dude, just, and, and I'm not making any judgments. I'm more like here. Sometimes I'm like, I'm eating Twinkies. And I like swallow the Twinkie, but I'm not finished eating it. I still have lots of bites that I can chew on it, but I want to hurry up and speed up that process so I can put like more Twinkie in my mouth. Crazy. <clears throat> so your pancreas, insulin, glucagon. I got two other, I've got two other hormones. One's called, and you've seen this before actually, somatostatin. Somatostatin, where you saw that, I briefly wrote that word when I was talking about growth hormone inhibiting hormone. That's the other name for it, somatostatin. So somatostatin is also, you know, made by your pancreas, and somatostatin stops secretions of insulin and glucagon. We have one more hormone called pancreatic 
polypeptide. Poly just means many, and peptide is going to tell you it has it's a protein. So pancreatic polypeptide. Pancreatic polypeptide is going to cause the release of the digestive enzymes that we're not going to talk about today. But whenever you eat food, enzymes are released from your pancreas to help you break down the food. This hormone causes those enzymes to be released. So we've got four hormones. One, two, three, four. So all four of these hormone, hormones are with the pancreas, right? Correct. If no one has any questions, I think I've covered everything on the endocrine system. Sorry, we're not leaving yet. But um, I'm going to stop recording because I think we're done with the endocrine system. <laughs>